<laughs> well, hello, this is Pastor Matthew Woods from Grace Lutheran Church in New Albany, Indiana. And this is the weekly devotion for October 25th, 2021. It's already the, the last devotion of uh, October. Uh, today's title is When Trouble Comes. When trouble comes, uh, it is good to turn to an expert for help, right? Today's text is taken from 1633, where Jesus says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. This promise, this promise comes on the same night of Jesus' betrayal, a night that presented itself with lots of trouble, and the disciples uh, could not handle them all. Judas' betrayal, the disciples run for their lives, uh, Jesus is crucified. There couldn't be more trouble than Good Friday when this, uh, when this stuff happened. And until Jesus' resurrection, trouble is where the disciples lived, hiding in their fear uh, and afraid of more trouble. So let's turn back to the conversation a little bit in John 16, because we had a perspective of when trouble comes. Uh, the disciples became concerned because Jesus tells them in John 16, 16, in a little while, they would see Jesus no more. And then after a little while, they will see him again. Jesus, of course, was speaking about his death and resurrection, but they did not fully understand yet. When Jesus, uh, Jesus warned them about the trouble uh, that would come to them, but that their trouble would find its answer in the resurrection. Uh, you will grieve, he says, while the world rejoices. You will grieve, but your grief will be turned to joy, he says. Trouble comes in many sizes and shapes. When it comes, a problem-solving effort usually begins right along with it. In many cases, my troubles of late have been relatively minor. My Wi-Fi system keeps resetting itself about every two weeks. Uh, thus begins a three to four hour phone marathon with uh, where we walk through all the steps to make it come back to life again. We hit the reset bu button, we unplug and replug, go to certain websites on my smartphone, reset passwords, and mysteriously, uh, that have mysteriously, by the way, stopped working themselves. I, I have literally gotten to know my, my tech support guy on a first name basis, going by uh, a phone name of Ron. And techs are all trained to share um, not to share their real name, so they use sort of a stage name instead. So every two weeks, Ron and I have, a, have had a conversation, and now this will have been the third time. This last weekend was round three. But I would, I would, I call an expert in order to help me work through the problem, talking me through uh, certain steps in order to reset my Wi-Fi and get it back up again. Of course, if this were the only problem to solve, uh, that would be great, right? However, troubles never come in single file, <laughs> never one to one. They usually come in clusters and in herds, and they affect believers and non-believers the same way. The Wi-Fi went down after having to charge up a dead battery on the bus, right? Just before our trip to, to St. Louis. The kids in the house couldn't use their Wi-Fi to get do their online classes, so they had to go somewhere else inconveniencing them. These are among other recent problems. I won't go into the long list of them. Troubles often come at inconvenient times as well. Batteries go dead just before bus trips. Wi-Fi's go down uh, when one needs to get online. The power goes out uh, at your hair salon right when you're scheduled to go get your hair cut. That happened this last week. The gas grill runs out of gas in the middle of cooking chicken. The city water supply stops working uh, after a hot, sweaty day working outside just before you got to go to work. It's never convenient. Of course, I've only mentioned the minor troubles so far. Be grateful if these are the only kind of troubles that you have to face. If these are your worst troubles. Many face a lot bigger ones than these. Illness, injuries, brokenness, a broken relationship, the loss of a loved one. These kinds of things do more to, than cause trouble. They're like earthquakes that rock a person's life, rocks their world, and then begins a, and then bring about, if you will, afterwards, countless aftershocks of new problems along with them. 
These kinds of things are often not fixed by experts, and they can't be. They become things we just have to live with or endure or overcome in, in small doses. Interestingly, though, those who often face such earthquakes in their lives, I often admire them because they are seemingly less overwhelmed by the new troubles that come, and they do, um, but they are more enabled to evaluate their troubles at this point uh, to the point that they are, are much more able to prioritize the important things and and the potency of trouble doesn't seem to, to, to hurt them or hit them as hard. Uh, they, they've learned to prioritize what's important. And in doing so, the little things stay the little things. So what do we do when we have trouble, when trouble comes? Well, after we roll our eyes, uh, have a couple of sighs, maybe share a few colorful words to ourselves. Uh, I often get to work, we all do, in fact, trying to figure out what was, what has to be done, what needs to be fixed, and, and who do we need to call. If I can handle it, I do. If you can handle it, you will. But uh, when I need an expert, I find the number and I settle in for a long phone call sometimes. Or I just call a friend for help, someone that knows what they're doing. Uh, a second set of eyes sometimes is all you need to figure something out. A second head in the game, if you will. Two heads are better than one, right? Of course, it's always good to start by calling the expert and friend. Uh, make a call and, and, uh, and pray, if you will, to our best friend, and that's Jesus, who is an expert of the world. Uh, after feeding the 5,000 with a day of lots of troubles, if you remember, Jesus spent hours in prayer in John 6, uh, 15 and following. And Jesus, we always have a better perspective and a good course to go. Second, let's weigh the problem. Is it really a big deal? Is this something fixable? Um, <clears throat> is there something else that's more important that we need to address first? A Wi-Fi failure is frustrating and time-consuming, but it is not the end of the world. It is fixable. If it is fixable, uh, start by giving thanks that it is and that it's nothing more than that. And work the problem a step at a time. Try not to get ahead of yourself. I tend to try to jump to the end, to the conclusion. Okay, why isn't it fixed? Patiently. The, when you talk to the techs online, they walk you one step at a time, eliminating uh, uh, different options. And so anxiety and panic, you know, throw those aside because they're not going to help you at all. They're just going to exaggerate your troubles. Uh, if something is fixable or even life altering, then perhaps ask for help with things that, that may bring some measure of relief instead. For example, uh, uh, for someone who is unable to drive because of physical therapy, or because of an illness, because of an impairment, something set in that they can't, consider calling a friend. If, if we have learned anything uh, from, from members who have struggled with long-term illness like cancer, for example, um, the little help goes for a lot of good, if you will, and, and good company and, and little blessings that otherwise uh, would lift up a beautiful day, a, a, a difficult day is made lighter, if you will, with that. They don't like putting people out. None of us do. But we're always grateful when someone pays attention, when someone gives us a little help, it makes the day just a little bit lighter, a little brighter as well. Finally, remember what Jesus says. You will have trouble in this world, but take heart. I have overcome the world. See, a lack of peace in this world is not an indication that Jesus has stopped caring about us or about you. Most of God's people experience a lack of peace uh, for one reason or another, but have learned to put their trust and hope in the Lord nonetheless. Trouble for the disciples did not end even after the resurrection. However, their resolve and their trust and their hope in the Lord um, that, that that grew and became more steadfast. And that, above everything else, is what we gain from overcoming our troubles. When Jesus tells us, tells his disciples rather, that he is going not going to be seen in a little while, they naturally feel immediate distress, as any of us would. Yet Jesus reminds them that the solution is always in Jesus. After the world has done its worst to God's people, the world will have to surrender to the authority of Jesus, the authority of his resurrection, the power of his judgment over the world. Grief will be turned to joy. Jesus will always get the last word. 
Grief has turned to joy. A person who dies in the Lord has overcome the grave, has overcome the world. Doesn't this by itself give us the best perspective of things? We recall Romans 8.32, which tells us, He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also along with him graciously give us all thanks? Why would God give us Jesus and not what else we need in the process? The Lord is not going to abandon us in times of trouble. This does not mean that all of our troubles are going to be solved as we would imagine them either. However, in the end, the world with all of its troubles is already overcome in the present tense, which means eventually all our troubles in Jesus will in fact be over. I have told you these things, Jesus says, so that in me you may have peace. I didn't say solutions, but in peace. In Jesus, that's the key. And the more we are in Jesus and the more uh, of him that defines our lives, the less potent our troubles will be. When we are called to eternal life, all troubles are erased. You won't, you won't give them a second thought. Uh, you won't give a second thought to cancer. You won't give a second thought to brokenness or your failures, not to stupid internet, not politics, not even death will even enter our minds because we will be alive in Jesus, overcoming the world. That's our promise. And I pray that this promise would bless all of us when we face our troubles. Well, I'm Pastor Woods. Thank you for joining me today. I appreciate you being with me this week. May you all have a blessed week, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.